Hola, yo soy Karim Sabat de PowerMetal.cl, el podcast live, y estoy junto a André Olbrich de Blind Guardian a días de presentarse con Blind Guardian en Chile. Él tuvo unos problemas de video, por tanto, solo va a estar en audio. Y queríamos partir preguntándole sobre The God Machine, sobre el concepto detrás del disco y cómo se relaciona con los eventos que han pasado en el mundo en el último tiempo. Uh, that is... <risa> um, how can I say? Um, well, I have to start from the very beginning, and that was the previous album before God Machine. We did an um, orchestra album, which was very epic and uh, just classical instruments. So after that album, we felt we wanted to do something completely different. And um, we wanted a band performance, which is not epic anymore in that way in that kind of way like uh, we did that orchestra album and probably um beyond the red mirror which was the last metal album before um and there we can start uh, we went into the songwriting and um, we had some great ideas which went back to the roots of blind guardian and um, had really that heavy brutal approach like in the 80s and uh, We played around with these elements and the more we wrote, the more fun it became. And uh, in the end, um, we came up with uh, songs that, of course, have a certain complexity like we had in our previous albums. But on the other hand, it has the spirit and uh, the energy of the very early days. And I think that combination makes this album a, a very special one. Ande, queríamos preguntarte por qué, a diferencia de sus discos anteriores que parten con mucha orquestación, esta vez decidieron partir directamente con un riff de guitarra. Um, that was not planned. It just happened um, when we tried to uh, put the songs together in an order and uh, we felt that the um, Deliver Us From Evil was the perfect opener in the end. So, uh, yeah. So all of, all of a sudden that riff was the opening for the album, but uh, it was not planned when I wrote it. ¿Fue la recepción de The God Machine la que ustedes esperaban o algo completamente distinto? It was uh, exactly uh, what I wanted. Uh, I wanted an album uh, which has lots of energy and uh, a great dynamic. And even though the songs are, are very different, um, we tried to, um, yeah, to make it kind of a, a concept uh, from the flow that, that, that you can listen the full album um, and that you feel you follow a red line through a story um, to the end. And I think this album um, has it. It's really... Um, Uh, it, it has a perfect flow in my uh, point of view. There's uh, uh, a few slower moments um, that take out the speed, but um, in general, uh, it's, it's a really energy burst all the time. <laughs> André, ¿cómo sienten que este álbum encaja dentro de toda la larga y gigante discografía de Line Guardian? ¿Es un disco que representa el pasado? ¿Es un disco que representa el futuro? ¿Es un disco que simplemente representa este momento? ¿Cómo lo ven? Well, every album you do um, is connected to a certain time. And that is the definition of Blind Guardian in 22. And um, I think uh, when we start doing an album, we don't look back what we achieved. It's always a new start. It's always that you have to prove to yourself and to your fans that you are able to create new music with new ideas and not stick to what you did and to stick to the success you had, but always try to prove in a new way that you can uh, create great music. And I think, uh, yeah, we achieved this with the God Machine album again. It's an, an album that only stands for itself. It doesn't need any of the old albums. It, It stands for itself, it has a message, and that message is Speed Metal is back. ¿Qué diferencias y similitudes encuentran ustedes que hay entre The God Machine y su discografía previa? En especial, no hablando de, de Twilight Orchestra, sino que de la discografía clásica de Blind Guardian. 
Well, I think um, uh, you can compare um, some uh, sounds um, that we used in the 90s because we went back to to analog recording in uh, certain parts. We used the uh, 24 track uh, uh, analog um, tape machine to record drums and record some uh, guitars because uh, it just sounds different if you are fully digital uh, or if you have that um, kind of uh, different compression uh, which is much more warm when you use when you listen to the old uh, vinyls uh, you will hear a big difference um, than listening to a mp3 stream of nowadays so uh, it, it has just more quality so we try to bring the qualities of the 80s and 90s back into the new digital world and i think um, um, of course, in the songwriting, we took all the experience from the complex stuff we wrote. Uh, we brought this in. Um, yeah, we, we look back to, um, to the origin of Blind Guardian, the first album, the, let's say, the original power we had. And we looked all these little details and tried to, um, to bring it, um, into the time of 2022 and i think um, we achieved this very well to combine this with all the new technology um, with all the new play abilities as a musician and um, yeah to have the best of of all worlds together ¿Cómo podrías definirnos y explicarnos el proceso de grabación y composición que tiene Blind Guardian y qué parte juegas tú en esto? Hansi and me are the main songwriter, and um, I um, write my uh, things in my home studio, um, and then um, I pass it to Hansi, and he likes to to work on his own as well. But we have a, a really good uh, communication and a really good system to give feedback to each other and um, kind of influencing each other's directions for the next steps and um, uh, since we are used to write songs together since more than 35 years um, we have a very great chemistry and and still have this chemistry together that uh, we can achieve yeah unbelievable creative output uh, and um, yeah I'm so happy that that Hanley and me are like this that uh, we just we still have this friendship this this basis you need to to work like this and uh, yeah we still have it and um, I, I even have the feeling it's still growing we are not in the end there's still uh, many things to expect from us we we always um, increase our work our work level um, techniques we always bring in new technologies um, and um, yeah always try to reach the peak and and we are very enthusiastic we are very passionate and what we do comes from the heart we would never do something for money we only do what we love and what really comes from our heart and and uh, with a love for music. And I think that is, in the end, what our fans appreciate, that they feel that this is real and that is not just some fake music to, to make some money, but that this is a real passion. Andre, queríamos saber un poco sobre ti. Eh, ¿Qué te llevó a decidir tocar guitarra y cuáles fueron tus guitarristas más influyentes, los que más influyeron en la música que tú desarrollas? Well, um, there was actually uh, two very important moments in my life. I was very young. I, I think I started listening to rock music when I was 10, 11. And um, I was a, a really big Kiss fan. And Ace Frehley was, was and still is one of my heroes. And um, yeah, I wanted to, um, to play guitar like him. So I, I started playing guitar when I was 12 and um, then um, not not much longer i went to a record store and i saw 
uh, Van Halen, Women and Children First was just released. And there was this amazing picture with that guitar player in front. And then I figured out Eddie Van Halen. And Eddie Van Halen is uh, until now my absolute guitar hero, my, my, yeah, my, the star of my heart. And um, even though um, I never really uh, dig into how they play, how they do their things, I learned so much from them about creating your own personal tone and play every tone with passion. That is what I learned. And that is um, um, how I created my own style then. But yeah, it's, I would say Ace Frehley and Eddie Van Halen were the most important guitar players in my life. Andre, sabemos que tú eres un fanático de la lectura, de las películas, las series, los videojuegos. Y queríamos saber cuáles han sido los últimos series, videojuegos, películas que han eh, captado tu atención, que más te han gustado y que han estimulado tu creatividad musical. Ah, uh, okay. So then, of course, it's video games. I play a lot uh, role-playing games uh, like World of Warcraft, Diablo, and uh, many, many others. And um, deep uh, diving into these fantasy worlds. Um, is creating a certain feeling in me that I want to write the music for these games. <laughs> and uh, so I am inspired. It's it's a taking and giving. Uh, I play them, I enjoy them. And at the same time, I get ideas in my, in my head that um, I think, okay, well, that would fit perfectly in that world. So for example, I played them uh, um, in an ice world and um, that was the inspiration to create the song destiny on the god machine album because for me the guitars really create that icy feeling of an ice world and i tried to to bring this visual thing into music so i transferred it into music and yes uh, it's sometimes very inspiring and what games are you playing right now um, right now, I play um, lots of Diablo 4 and I play World of Warcraft Hardcore, uh, which is really challenging. <laughs> and um, well, I, I play um, other games um, as well, like, like uh, Elder Scrolls Online or um, uh, Tom Clancy's Division, which, which is more like a shooter. But okay, you need some, you know, some games in the pool. And, I have many. <laughs> Hablando un poco de música, de power speed metal, ¿hay alguna banda en el último tiempo que te haya gustado, que te haya llamado la atención y que estés escuchando? Uh, a month, yes, I didn't uh, dig too much into it because we were really focused on what we do with Blind Guardian and I'm uh, always busy, 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 so um, I didn't listen to too many bands beside my favorite bands from the 70s okay. and um well i i couldn't name a band now which really caught my attention i can say that we had the dawn of extinction with us in the tour um from spain which are a, a really cool band i really like the guys and uh, but uh, yeah beside this um I, I don't remind anything now. Andre, de todas las canciones que tiene Blind Guardian, ¿cuáles son actualmente aquellas que te llaman la atención para tocar en vivo, que te propone un desafío, que te encanta eh, tocar en tus shows? Uh, uh, American uh, Secrets of the American Gods is a really challenging solo. Uh, it's especially the second half is uh, very difficult to play and uh, in that speed it's it's a real challenge and it took me several months to figure out how i will do this live uh, but yeah i found my way and it was lots of rehearsing 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 and now it comes uh, it came out great and i'm really proud that even after all those years i can um, face challenging just and achieve a better guitar play um, if I'm working on it and yeah. Uh, but there's many uh, tough solos. Violent Shadows is not so easy as well. Um, I think there's some great solos in the, in the God Machine album. And um, 
but it's a difference if you work it out in the studio or if you have to play it live. So yeah, <laughs> I had a real backfire. I had a real backfire when I, went, when I was preparing for the tour. André, ya estamos terminando la entrevista y quería preguntarte si puedes dar, o más que preguntarte, invitarte a darle un mensaje eh, a alguien que está queriendo partir ahora con la música, que quiere desarrollar una idea musical, que quiere empezar con su banda. ¿Qué mensaje le darías? I think uh, uh, my biggest advice is you should always play what you love to play and not uh, just try to learn techniques or, or the... Uh, Yeah, uh, to play the, let's say, things that bore you. Um, for me, the best way to learn guitar was that I, I put my favorite album on the speakers and then I played along. Even that it was crap in the beginning and no tone was, most tones were totally off, it was fun and I enjoyed it. And then you do it more often and you become better. And, and, um, Another great thing is, of course, if you do it with friends. If you find some friends who are also into music, um, form a band. Uh, and um, it doesn't matter if you want to become professional already or not. Just do it for the fun. It's, it's all about enjoying fun feelings. And so just do it and, and enjoy and don't care what other people say. <laughs> André, no podemos cerrar la entrevista sin previamente preguntarte ¿qué recuerdos tienes de todos, de todos los shows que has realizado en Chile con Blind Guardian? The best, because uh, it's... Uh, I mean, I, I really uh, love uh, uh, touring, of course. And every country has, has its own individual impressions. And, and Chile... Is, the people are so kind and so lovely, and uh, it was a, a very lovely atmosphere in the shows. I really enjoyed. I can say that I'm looking forward to play there again, and it's so soon that I'm really happy. <laughs> y ya para despedirme, André, quería invitarte a darle un mensaje y a invitar a la gente al show que hará Blind Guardian en Chile este 14 de noviembre. Well. Come and see our show on November 14th because, of course, it will be a blast. We, are, we have an amazing run. We are playing shows with full energy and we have an amazing set list. So join the party. Cool. Okay, Andre, thank you for the interview. Thank you for your time. Thank uh, you. See you in Chile in 15 days. Yes, see you <laughs> soon. Thank you and bye-bye.